All right, guys, happy Monday on this very special Memorial Day. Let's take a second to remember everybody that fought for the United States of America. Again, hope you guys are enjoying this day. And again, Memorial Day, let's not forget the people that fought for your freedom. So again, enjoy your day. And I want to get the content out for you guys continuously today. I don't stop. Fantasy doesn't stop. The content doesn't stop here on the number one fantasy football podcast. I wanted to get content out to you guys and have a discussion. If, I know if you guys are having a day off, maybe you're not on your commute, but you're at home hanging out so we can hang out, talk, and hang out today on this day off for many Americans today. So let's talk about today. We're talking QB and wide receiver stacks, okay? Who is the best in the league? So I want to dive into this episode. And I want to make it interactive. So in the comments below, if you're in the car or if you're just listening to this on audio, jump on over to YouTube at Fantasy Football Counselor to this video and in the comments below. I want to know from you guys and why, okay, who and why is the best wide receiver stack? Who, which two are the best wide receiver QB stacks in the NFL? Is it Burrow and Chase? Is it Jefferson and Cousins? Is it Mahomes and Kelsey? Yes, we're going to count Kelsey as a wide receiver in this case. I want to know from you guys, so drop it in the comments below. And I'm going to go over who I believe is the best quarterback wide receiver stack for 2023 and answer the question, should you be stacking a quarterback and a wide receiver? Is that a viable thing to do in fantasy football when we're talking fantasy football draft strategy? So a lot to discuss here. I've got, you know, six of the top stacks. We're going to go over a couple stats. You just have like an open discussion. This isn't necessarily a list. I'm not going to put it in any order because typically, you know, a lot of my shows are structured like top five, this top five, that. No, I just want to have an open discussion. We're talking, we're interacting here again in the comments. Let me know who the best quarterback wide receiver stack is in the NFL. So let's talk about, let's have an open discussion. Uh, let's narrow it down to, you know, the top six here, there's some honorable mentions. And understand, everybody, that there is a ton of young quarterbacks. C.J. Strout, you got Anthony Richardson, who could be connecting with their wide receivers really well this year, right? Now, you even have, you know, like I said, C.J. Strout, he asked Tank Dell to come onto the team and be drafted a young wide receiver. Maybe that's a connection. Who knows? But I really doubt that they will reach the level that these guys have so early on. Very unlikely that these rookies come in and make that happen, okay? So that's why I'm sticking to the guys that, you know, are already kind of proven to some degree, all right? So the first stack I want to talk about is Josh Allen and Diggs. This has to have an honorable mention here as one of the, not even honorable mention, but a mention as a top stack as a consideration, as a nominee, as being the top QB and wide receiver stack. And actually, before I get into this, should you be stacking a quarterback and wide receiver? The answer is simple. Sure, absolutely, if the value is right. That's the big question. If the value is right, then go ahead and do that. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is if, if Josh Allen and Diggs are coming off round one and two, you got to ask yourself, do I want a running back in that first two rounds? Okay. If so, maybe it's too expensive to stack Diggs and Josh Allen, which again, they are going to be pretty expensive. Okay. And they're both coming off typically round two and three here this year. So you got to ask, is the, is the juice worth the squeeze? Whatever you want to say. Right. Um, so again, that's ultimately up to you, but it doesn't hurt. Last year, I drafted mid-season. There was a mid-season league last year. I actually ended up getting, believe it or not, Hurts and A.J. Brown, and they won me my league along with Kenneth Walker. It was just a great year, uh, and that those guys crushed it to me week in, week out. So, again, it's up to you guys whether you want to invest early or whether you want to, you know, play it differently and mix it up and get a different position that isn't on that on that stack. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? Hopefully it does. All right, so Allen and Diggs. Allen last year was second in uh, fantasy points. And when you look at rushing touchdowns, he had seven. Ninth in passing. Now, when I look at a quarterback and a wide receiver, do I like to see a lot of volume going out? He made it up. Allen did rushing, Josh Allen. Diggs saw a lot of targets, 154. Is that going to continue? I still think Allen and Diggs continue their reign here as they try to make a Super Bowl run. Their time is ticking as a team. Their time is ticking in age. They are going to crush it this year. But again, I think they're too expensive to stack, but it is a solid stack and considered probably one of, if not the best stacks in NFL, especially for fantasy football. Another stack here is Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Obviously, this is a great stack. When you look at Burrow, Fourth in fantasy points last year, 350, 
fifth in attempts, so more attempts coming out of Joe Burrow as he as he throws more. Now, Chase was 11th in fantasy points. He only played 12 games. He still managed to get 134 targets. This is a really attractive stack, but again, you're paying a round one pick for Jamar Chase, and you're paying at least a third to fourth to fifth round, depending on how many people are in your league, and and you know if it's a super flex league or whatever, he's going to come off higher, obviously, but Joe Burrow, relatively expensive. This is another expensive stack, but another solid stack. So do you guys like the Joe Burrow Chase stack? Let me know below as well. Love to get your feedback there. But again, it's really attractive to see that Jamar Chase only played 12 games, still managed to get 134 targets. That is insane. And finished 11th in fantasy points. So the sky is the limit as long as he stays healthy. Jam- uh, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, a really solid stack. And probably a consideration for being the top stack. And I'll tell you which, which stacks I really like as well, okay? And again, in the comments below, let me know what, what you guys are thinking here. What are you guys thinking? Who is the best stack? Let me know. Another stack here, again, no particular order. I'm just talking here. We're having a conversation, let, weighing it out here. <clears throat> Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown, another sexy stack here for you. Again, Hurts got paid, got incentivized. Last year was only 16th in attempts with 460. Obviously got a lot done on the ground, 13 rushing touchdowns. So if you stack, I understand a lot of points are going to be coming from Jalen Hurts rushing. But even A.J. Brown got it done last year, 146 attempts, 88 receptions, and 11 touchdowns. Not bad at all for A.J. Brown. Another solid stack. Like I said, I had them. I drafted midseason in this one league, won the championship in that league because of this stack. Very, very attractive here. And then you got Kirk Cousins and you got Jefferson. Now, a lot of people say, well, Kirk Cousins is not an attractive fantasy quarterback but the guy was relatively consistent the guy actually finished quietly finished believe it or not eighth in fantasy points right and 14th in attempts sorry fourth in attempts i thought fourth in attempts 643 attempts guys for cousins he throws a lot he's not a rushing quarterback and jefferson coming off a pinnacle year you got to question you know wide receivers coming off pinnacle years is it duplicatable? Is he going to repeat? But look at these numbers here. 184 targets, 128 receptions, 1,809 yards, and eight touchdowns. Very hard to duplicate. Definitely in the receiving yards at 1,809. I don't see it happening. But if he stays healthy, definitely viable here. But I'm just weary and a little bit apprehensive and a little you know suspect about drafting wide receivers coming off pinnacle years. That's why Jamar Chase is a little more attractive to me in round one because I just feel that he's on an upward swing, whereas Jefferson is in a bit of a downward swing. Even though it's going to be a subtle downward swing, if he's healthy, he's still going to be producing. I still feel the ceiling is a little higher for a Jamar Chase than it is for a Jefferson. So again, another sexy stack here, but are you going to invest in a Jefferson early coming off a pinnacle year? I do recommend him in the 16 rounds. By the way, if you've not, if you've not got the 16 round draft solution, secure it below. I've linked it. Use code SMASH to save. I recommend Jefferson. Obviously, you cannot deny him. You cannot really predict an injury. Even though I did it with Cup last year, I feel Jefferson's just younger, better player and you know, I'm I'm particularly going running back round one, but I cannot deny that he has to be recommended round one. But I don't feel as warm and fuzzy about him because he's coming off this pinnacle year and injuries do tend to happen. Things tend to happen to shift and change. But Jefferson being the young guy that he is still could continue on with his, you know, dominant performance. And we've seen consistent dominant performance out of wide receivers throughout the years. Antonio Brown, a good example, you know, from like 2016, 2017-ish, it had the good, you know, good years in there, okay? Other stack here, obviously, Mahomes and Kelsey. I mean, McKel- I mean Kelsey, 152 targets, 110 uh, receptions, 12 touchdowns, getting it done in the red zone there. Number one in fantasy points was Mahomes. Third in attempts, again, Mahomes getting it done a lot in the year. 648 attempts. Love to see that volume, okay? So you're getting a lot of volume out of Cousins. You're getting a lot of volume out of Mahomes. You're getting a lot of volume out of Joe Burrow. Really, really attractive stuff, okay? Let's talk about some honorable mentions here that are worth talking about. Again, this is not a particular order. Again, at the end of this, I'll tell you who I like. And drop a comment below. Let me know who you guys like, which is the ultimate QB stash, uh, QB wide receiver stash, who is the one you want to do? Who do who's the one you want to combo? Let me know. Uh, honorable mention, I, I think this is going to be a really special connection. I think the sky really is the limit for Trevor Lawrence this year. Him and Ridley could crush it. Lawrence, seven in fantasy points last year, seventh in attempts. Love, love, love myself some Trevor Lawrence. Last year, the target getters were Kirk with 133 targets and Zay Jones at 121. Both those guys suck. You saw Ridley in some mini camp training. 
His ADP has already shot up from like round six to round three, which is ludicrous. It's crazy. That shows you how much people jump on the hype. I did a draft already, a big money league draft, and got him in the sixth round, which is amazing. So, you guys, understand that this could be an amazing connection. Lawrence Ridley, look out. Lawrence coming into his own, and he's really going to flourish this year. I'm a really big guy on Lawrence this year. I love him, love the value. You can get him cheaper for like, than an Allen and a Hurts and a Mahomes and even a Burrow. <clears throat> love the upside there. Other honorable mentions here, we got Tua and Hill. Tua looking like he's bulking up a lot. Almost a little too much for me. Looks a little bit over you know, over bulked, I would say, okay? So I'm a little concerned about Tua. Is it just a muscle bulk or is it actually fat? We don't know. Is that going to slow him down? Obviously, he needs to bulk up to stay healthy, but that's not really going to protect you from concussions. In fact, you want to be a little lighter, not so sluggish, I think, to evade uh, some of the uh, pass rushes. So I don't know what Tua is doing. I don't know what type of shape he's in, but I don't know if he's even going to stay healthy the entire season. So that puts this combination and this stack in a little bit of a suspect situation. Obviously, Tua, better value quarterback. If you want a quarterback, get him later. But Hill, Tua could be awesome stack this year. Rodgers and Garrett Wilson could be another amazing stack. Rodgers in his last hurrah with the Jets. Is he going to finish his career off strong? Very possible. They've got a really good offense going right now with him, with Brees Hall coming back. Hopefully he's healthy. And, of course, Garrett Wilson. That could be a really sexy stack, and you're going to get Rodgers a little bit later. And Garrett Wilson, you're still going to have to pay a second-round pick for him. And then you got Carr and Alave. Carr, you get for an immense value. Alave, you're going to have to spend about a third-round pick for him. Again, you're going to pay for a lot of it. You're going to get value on Derek Har Carr. So, again, you're going to get value on Cousins. You're going to get value on Rodgers. You're going to get value on Carr. You're going to get value on Tua. Pretty decent value on Trevor Lawrence as well. You're going to pay higher for some of the receivers. So, again, it's up to you guys whether you want to stack them. Now, the stack of the season is very hard to tell. I really like the sleeper stack here of Trevor Lawrence and Ridley. I love the sleeper stack here with Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson. But a nice stack here is Joe Burrow and Chase. We've got Burrow in a contract year. Chase, on, like I said, an upward swing coming, coming off a bit of a down year. I think that could be the top stack if they stay healthy. That is the big key, of course, in anything that I'm talking about here. Hurts could honestly continue safe and steady as well. Obviously, we know Mahomes and Kelsey. But you got to question yourself, when is Kelsey going down, whether it be injury or regression? We don't know. That is the big question. They brought in rookie Rashi Rice. I think they got him in the second or third round as a rookie. They drafted him. You know, Are they going to spread the ball more? But either way, Kelsey's going to continue to get his targets. I mean, the defenses have to key in and stop this assault here that comes in every single year from Mahomes and Kelsey. They just can't stop it. So will this be the last year with Kelsey on the rise? He's been consistent for too long. When is that decline going to happen? You know, maybe it's this year. And if that's the case, they're on a downward swing. We don't know. So a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of moving, a lot of shaking, a lot of rookies coming in, a lot of changes. Is Russell Wilson going to bounce back? Is he going to connect with Judy? Is that another connection? That's what makes fantasy so fun. That also makes watching football so fun because every year is different. Things change. Things constantly in movement, okay? So, again, I just want to have, like, an open discussion here on QB stacks. To answer your question, yes, you could stack. Yes, you should stack. But, again, don't overpay. Kind of look for the scenario. You know, again, it's up to you guys. I don't typically stack. I really don't think in my mind I'm going into this and I'm stacking Burrow and Chase. That's not really in my mindset. I just look for the best possible quarterback and the best possible receiver in that particular round, all right? Now, again, if you want to know who to draft in each round, secure the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it below. Subscribe and I keep the content coming to you. Enjoy your Memorial Day off today, guys. And again, smash the thumbs up and comment below. Let me know who you guys like here as the ultimate stack here, all right? Again, open discussion. Just get in your mind thinking. Get into that fantasy state of mind. That's what we're trying to do. Get into that frame as we get into full flow fantasy football season. We are ramping up here, guys. June is here. It's coming. And uh, we'll talk soon, guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to keep the content coming to you. We'll talk soon. I'm out.